Back in the garage today. In the garage. Back in the garage. Back in the garage today. What's going on guys? Back in the garage today, getting ready to refresh the forks on my 2016 KTM 1290 Super Adventure. It's got a little over 51,000 miles on it. I bought all the parts and then literally like three days later they started leaking. But I wanted fresh oil in anyway, so we got new seals, new bushings, fresh oil, and you know, it's just time to rebuild them. So if you've got a, you know, a Super Duke GT, this is gonna be very similar, though the amounts of oil may be a little bit different since they got you know, less travel. Uh, also, if you have one of the Super Adventure S models, as long as you have the semi-active suspension, this video is for you. If you have the traditional uh, manually adjustable fork, this video is not gonna work for you. So um, let me show you the parts and stuff here, and then we're gonna hop into working on the bike. All right, so if we take a look here, this is the seal and dust cover kit and we can get a look at the part number. And then I have no idea what shape the, uh, the bushings are in, but we're gonna go ahead and replace those since we're gonna have everything apart. There is a look at the part number on that. Like I said, I'll link it down in the description too. The other thing you're gonna need is some fork oil and I'll go over, or I'll at least put the capacities up on the screen right now. Uh, KTM, if you wanna stay factory spec, it does call for a four weight. The stuff isn't the cheapest, uh, but I was able to buy just the amount I needed from uh, JT Motorsports. If, if you want to mix your own, you can mix your own to get to four weight. You could put five weight in. I'll leave that up to you. But I'm going to keep mine at OEM spec four weight oil. All right, so to get started, I'm actually not removing the wheel or anything first. The first thing I want to do is loosen up these two top pinch bolts. That's going to use a 45 uh, Torx. We're going to loosen these up, and then we're going to work on the cap here in just a second. All right, so because we have the electronically controlled suspension, we need to undo this plug. Now this is a rubber boot on top of here. If you pull that back, you can see the plastic connector. Uh, just pull that off and set it to the side. One thing we need to be extremely careful of, we can't damage this or we're gonna be out quite a bit of money. And this isn't, while there is a screw there, this isn't something we wanna take out. We simply want to remove the fork cap. Now KTM does have a specific tool to do that and I'll put the part number up on the screen. It's about $50, $60. But what I'm going to attempt to do, and this is at your own risk, I've just got a pin spanner wrench here. So I'm gonna set this down in. All I'm trying to do, I don't wanna take the cap completely out. I just wanna break it loose before we get off the bike, before we get it off the bike. And you can see, it's spinning, they're not in there very tight. So if you wanna to run to the hardware store, I think that's where I got this, you can just get a regular old spanner wrench and spin that loose. So uh, we're done up top here. Actually, we're gonna do this uh, same exact thing over on the other side, just loosen it up. It just makes life a little bit easier uh, when we go to uh, get the wheel and everything off. Okay, so while I'm gonna unloosen these pinch bolts just like I did on the other side and loosen this cap, when I get done, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these pinch bolts back up because I'm gonna work on uh, the, the other fork first and I just don't wanna take the chance of this falling out. So um, anyway, we're gonna do the same thing we did on the other side, except tighten these back up once we've got this broken loose. Okay, so with the suspension cap on the left-hand fork loosened and the pinch bolts tightened back up, next thing we're gonna do is remove the front wheel. I'm not actually gonna show that because I've done a video on it on how to remove it and how to put it back on. I'll link that up here. So when we come back, the front wheel will be off the bike and then we'll move back to uh, getting these forks off. Okay, so as you can tell, we got the, uh, the, we got the front wheel off. Go ahead and remove the calipers from the wheel as well or from the, uh, from the fork as well. The no other thing we're gonna have to do that's different than just wheel removal, we need to remove this front fender because obviously it's connecting the two forks. So you've got two T27 Torx bits here. And if we come around here to the side, you got another one. You've got that on both sides. Also, don't forget to disconnect this little fastener here from the, uh, from the brake line. And on, over here on the left-hand side, you also have your uh, your wheel speed sensor down here. So we're gonna get this front fender pulled off next and then we can finally start working on the forks themselves. All right, so we got the front fender off. Now one thing I did, since I'm gonna be working on this right side fork first, I went ahead and put the bolt back in on the caliper over on this one so we don't have any tension on the lines. And then over on this side, I just grabbed a zip tie and looped it through and hooked it on to the crash bar. So next thing we wanna do, we wanna grab a seven millimeter hex. There's a bolt down here at the bottom. We're not gonna take it all the way out. All we wanna do is just crack it loose. That way it'll make it a little bit easier once we get the fork off the bike. Okay, so with that bottom bolt uh, cracked loose, next we need to come up here. 
because we already have the top triple clamp loosened up, these bolts. We're gonna come down here to the bottom of the triple clamp. Hopefully I can see it. We've got two 45 or T45s just like up top. We need to loosen these up and then we should be able to slide the fork down out of the triple clamp. All right, so with the fork off the bike, next thing I'm gonna do is take my spanner wrench and, and take this uh, top cap off of here. So we're gonna do that and then we're gonna start to drain the oil. Now, because we already loosened up that seven millimeter Allen, we don't actually need to put this thing back in the vise. We should just be able to take this out by hand which we did. Uh, there is a little washer on the back. And now we're just gonna take the, uh, the cartridge out of the fork leg. Okay, so with the cartridge obviously removed, next we're just gonna take a small flat blade and get this dust boot removed or at least slid down there we go we got that pop loose we're just gonna slide that down out of the way now now sticking with this small flat blade there's a lock ring down here and i'm not gonna be able to get the camera in close enough to show you but they do leave you a little indentation to get down in there and pop it loose so i'll show you what it looks like here in just a second so here's the little lock ring you can see they leave you that little um there you go they leave you a little mark there so you can either get a flat blade down in there or maybe a pick and uh, just pop that off of there. Okay, with the lock ring removed, we should just be able to hammer slide this thing apart. Just like that. Watch out, there is still gonna be some oil left. All right, so with the fork leg in the, uh, in the vise here, we've got our bushings on here. And like I said, I'm replacing mine. This top one doesn't look bad. Make sure you lay all this stuff in the order that you took it off so you don't forget. This one should just slide right off. We've got the metal washer. We got the fork seal. And then we're gonna come down here and slide off the lock ring. And then finally, the dust boot. All right guys, so now that I have everything disassembled, I'm gonna go out in the driveway with some parts cleaner and paper towels, and I wanna clean up every single component. You know, we just took out the bolt on the bottom, the, uh, the outer tube, the inner tube, all the parts, cartridge, I'm gonna spray it all down, get it all cleaned up, and then we're gonna come back in here and start reassembling the right fork. All right, with the fork all cleaned up, next we're gonna start putting our, uh, our new seals and bushings on here. So good idea to have a little tub of grease. And uh, let me show you another tool you're gonna need here in order to get this done. All right, so this is a, a fork tool from Motion Pro. We can just, this is, you get their specific size, I'll link it down in the description. That just sits down on here. That way we don't have that ridge there because we don't want to cut our new seal when we go to put it on. So, so the next thing I like to do is take a little bit of fork oil, doesn't matter what it is, and just put that over this. If you don't have one of these, you can use some like saran wrap or something like that. You just want to make sure you take that ridge out. So I went ahead and put a thin coat of, uh, of grease on this. This is our... Uh, our dust boot, we're just gonna go ahead and slide it down. Next up, we're gonna take our lock ring out of our new kit. We're gonna slide it down, let it fall. Next up is our fork seal itself. Now there's a beveled side to it. You want the beveled side, you know, you want, you want the wider part of it pointing up. There's also down here a, uh, a little metal spring. You want it pointing down. Just go ahead and slide it down on there. Next up, we've got our support ring. Let it drop down into place. And then we have our lower bushing. Let it drop down and then we can take this off. And then the last one, we have the upper bushing here and you just got to pry it apart with your fingers just a little bit. It should snap right into place. Okay, so in order to get this fork back together, we're gonna need a seal driver. This is one made by Tusk. This is a you know specific size for this fork, it's 48 millimeter. 
Uh, I'll link that down in the description below, but this is, uh, there are other ways to do it, but this is the easiest way and the, uh, the, the best way. All right, you can see I put the inner fork back, or the uh, inner tube back into the outer tube. That's my fork seal right there. Now it's not in place. What I want to show you is your dust boot and your lock ring. You want to keep them out of the way. And then we're going to take this fork seal driver, and it's going to be hard to show all this. And we're going to place this over, and i got to lock it on the other side. And then we're going to basically hammer the the seal into place. Now it does need to seat all the way down and you'll know because if it doesn't we're not going to be able to get this lock ring in place here in a minute. So let me get this uh, seal driven down into place. Alright so I got the seal in place and it's going to be tough to see. I got the, the lock clip in there too. Make sure you hear it snap in. If it doesn't snap in you may not have your seal down far enough. Once you hear it all to, be, all to be click in, just check it all the way around to make sure it is in the ridge. And then the next thing to do is grab our, uh, our, dust, uh, our dust seal here and uh, slide it up into place. All right, so with all this stuff back in place, now we're gonna take our inner cartridge and we're gonna drop it down in. And then we're gonna find that seven millimeter hex we took out earlier. And it's going to be a little hard to show and you're kind of going to have to feel for it, but we need to get that back into place and uh, go ahead and make sure we got it threaded in and then we'll torque it down here in just a few minutes. Okay, so we just got that bottom bolt back in. The torque spec on it is 25 newton meters. All right, so I've gone ahead and poured out the amount of fork oil I need for this right fork leg, which is 430 milliliters. And we've got it set up here in the vise right now. All we're gonna do is just pour it down into the uh, outer tube here. And then once we've got it in there, um, basically we're just gonna spin the top cap back on and we'll be ready to put it back on the bike. Okay, so with all the oil in, all we do is just raise up the, the outer tube here to the cap, uh, put a little bit of grease on that O-ring and then spin it on down. So it's time to get the fork back on the bike. There's really not gonna be much to show here. Uh, we're just going to have to feed it up through the bottom of the triple clamp up to the top and then get these pinch bolts tightened down. These bottom pinch bolts will be 12 newt meters. The tops will be 20 newt meters. But I'll, I'll show you kind of the final fit and finish here once we get it in place. All right, you can see I got the fork in place. So a couple of things. One, you do have a few different rings on the side of this. Now I put mine so it's in line with, with the top ring. If you want, I mean, there, there are some changes you can make to it. If you raise the forks up a little bit, it's gonna make it handle a little bit better in tight conditions. If you drop the forks down, it makes it more stable at high speeds. Then again, if you're shorter, you might wanna raise them up a little bit. Just make sure it's back where you want it. Also, this connector, I've got mine pointing in. It just makes it a little bit easier when I go to uh, put my electrical connection back on. So a couple of things. One, I gotta to torque down the bolts, the uh, pinch bolts on the upper and lower triple clamp. Two, I'm going to put a little bit of dielectric grease in here just to make sure, you know, we keep dirt and rain and those sorts of things out. And then we're going to move on to the other fork. Just a quick heads up, whenever you're working on a pinch bolts like these, torque it, torque it, torque it, torque it. Do it a couple of times because this metal will stretch a little bit and while it might have torqued right the first time, it's going to pull it. So you might have to do it two, three times. So unfortunately we got a little more work to uh, get this one off. We got a couple of Torx 27 bits up here. We need to be able to drop this uh, bottom triple clamp uh, cover down and then I'll show you what else we got to do here in a second. You can also use an eight millimeter if you don't want to use the Torx. So anyway, this is what we had to get loose. It's going to be a little tough to show. I'll see if I can get zoomed in there. It's going to be a little tough to show, but this right here is for the steering stabilizer. We're not pulling that all the way out. We're just going to loosen it up. And I believe that is also a Torx 45 bit. So let me get in there. So again, uh, I loosened that up. I didn't take it out. I actually came down from the top and I was able to get a ratchet on it. Now I'm going to move around here to the side. Okay, so over on the sides, much like the other side, uh, we've got the two pinch bolts down here on the lower triple clamp that are 45 uh, Torx. We also have this 10 millimeter bolt right here we need to take out to disconnect the steering stabilizer. And then obviously up top, we've got the other two upper uh, 
pinch bolts there on the upper part of the triple clamp we need to uh, not take out but at least loosen up all right so with the left fork leg out we're gonna do the same thing we did on the uh, on the right one I'm gonna grab my spanner wrench and start spinning this cap out All right, and then same thing, once we get the oil drained out, we're gonna take the seven uh, millimeter hex bolt and get that out of the bottom of the fork. All right, so this is what the fork looks like disassembled once we get that bottom bolt pulled out. Obviously, we have the spring on the left-hand side of the fork. Now, you can further disassemble this if you want, if you wanted to check your spring length, those sorts of things. I'm not going to, I'm just going to be doing oil seals and bushings today. So I'm gonna get the rest of this disassembled it's exactly the same as the last one where you've got the uh, the dust cover here, you got your, your ring inside, everything's exactly the same. So I'm gonna do all of that and then I'm gonna show you the one difference when we come back. And obviously I'm gonna clean all this stuff up too. So uh, give me a few minutes and then I'll show you the one little difference in reassembling this fork as opposed to the right hand side. All right, you can see we've got the fork back in the vice grip. We've replaced all the seals, bushings, all that sort of thing. Everything was the same except on the left fork, we're gonna use a little bit more oil. We're actually gonna use 680 milliliters. So we're gonna pour that in up top here and then get the cap back on and then get the fork back on the bike. Okay, so we're getting ready to put the fork back on. Now it's pretty much the same. We gotta slide it up into the uh, lower and upper triple clamp. You know, same torque specs. We got uh, 12 newt meters here, 20 newt meters up top. But this is that thing we loosened up earlier that we had to get in here. This is what connects on to your steering stabilizer. So it is going to go on top of the lower triple clamp and you're gonna have to slide the fork up through it. I'm not gonna be able to show you because there's no space to get a camera, but I'll kind of show you what the finished uh, product looks like here in a minute. Okay, so taking a look down here, just to recap, we got 12 newt meters on, on uh, these clamps. Also, uh, we gotta get uh, your stabilizer bolt back in. I'll put the torque on the screen right now. And then, the stabilizer clamp, which is that bolt we took out earlier, we got that back in place. Up top here, we had the 245 Torx bits that are 20 newt meters. Make sure you get your, your suspension, your, your fork on this side at the same height as you do on the other side. And then, like I said earlier, uh, I'm gonna put some dielectric grease on my connectors, get those connected, get the, uh, get the wheel and stuff back on, and we should be done here in a few minutes. One thing I almost forgot, we do need to put these couple of screws back in to hold this little plastic panel back into place. Okay, so we got the entire bike back together. Like I said, if you need to know how to remove and, and uh, install the wheels, there's a video on that that I linked earlier. Last thing to do is just kick it on and make sure we're not throwing any codes. Uh, I already tested this earlier, we're not. And also, you know, probably the only reason you're really gonna throw a code if you followed my instructions is if you didn't plug your uh, your wires back in, but everything's good here and I uh, can't wait to test it out. All right guys, so that is how you rebuild the forks on one of these KTM Super Adventures with the semi-active suspension. It's not really that scary. It's actually pretty straightforward. There are a couple of specialty tools you need and you know, I talked about those along the way, but I will link them down in the description below to help you out if this is something you wanna do. It's gonna cost you a few bucks for the tools, but a lot less than if you took your uh, suspension to the shop and had it worked on. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, considering that subscribe button because if you like motorcycles, well, this is the place to be. If you have any questions, probably by the time you watch this, I've got to go out and ride the bike and I can't wait because it should be so much better. Uh, but if you got questions about that or anything about the process, let me know down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, I'll talk to you again soon.